All right. Good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to a fine <laughs> Live the Feel show on a Friday evening. And uh, yes, you already hear some giggling in the background. I've got a new fun guest co-host, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we might be giggling. We might be having a lot of positive energy. And she might know a little bit about... I don't know, rising above this crazy pandemic transition. We were just chatting about that before we hit record. And, but let me give you a quick background on her. Uh, she might know a little bit about like biographies and speaking and uh, might know a little about TEDx. Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to put that on my to-do list in my crazy busy schedule. Uh, but her name is her brand. I'll give you that in a second. But she's definitely on a mission for that human connection. And I think a lot of us are challenged with that right now with our virtual lives under quarantine. Mm -hmm. And a fun tag for the show, we're going to learn about possibly this whole living like a <laughs> pandemic astronaut. So uh, without further ado, Ginger Johnson, welcome to the dun, show. Dun, dun. Scott, you should have a top hat. I feel like you're the ringleader. I'm there we go. Da -da. <laughs> Thank you. It's, yeah, it's great to be here. Well, thanks yeah. for making the time, you know. Oh, uh, certainly. I mean, you have a lot of other things you could be doing on a Friday evening, so. Well, back at you, too. And it, it's always good to connect with another former firefighter, too. So that's a cool thing. Yes, and that's what I loved about your background. I didn't want to just toss <laughs> it out there right away, but hands down, fan. So uh, I always give shout out to back my fellow you. first responders. You know, it's, yes. I only did it for a couple of years, but it changed my life. And yeah, ditto. You know, so, soon, if I ever finish the book editing, the book will talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Which, yeah. by the way. Book yes. editing. Hmm. Yeah. You need an editor? I'm, oh no, I hired one. Okay. Because I, I suck so bad at it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I was well, like, okay. You're a writer. You shouldn't be editing. It, I can barely write it, let alone edit it. <laughs> so, and believe me, her edits of my edits are already quite impressive. And she, so now I have to go through her edits. That's something else I'm doing this. Oh, week. I wrote this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's like, did you ever think about doing this and doing that? I'm like, no. That's why I hired you. Feel free to critique and clean up my mess. Okay. So. Right. What's the book about? Uh, it's, we're still finishing the title. I thought I had a title and then she suggested a different title, but it's going to be called Hot Shots uh, because obviously I served as a hotshot wildland firefighter. Um, so we're still finalizing that if we're going to go with a one word title or not. But the point is, is I want to share some of the behind the scenes, what it was like serving as a wildland firefighter, but really mm -hmm. about the lessons learned, the transformations. Uh, I even have a piece in there about brotherhood and sisterhood, the connectivity piece, that human mm -hmm. connection, right? Like I right. talk in that in one chapter that, I have had a lot of jobs in my life, a lot of career changes before becoming an entrepreneur, and I have never reached that level of connectivity until mm -hmm. I served in that, in that position. Like, it was a whole different level. Like, you learn, like, you hate each other some days, <laughs> like, you're really annoyed with each other, but then it's like, oh, wait a minute, I'm risking my life alongside of you. It's a, that's a whole different level of connectivity. That was not, I was yes, not ready for that. Yeah, so. absolutely. You're so right. Your life literally depends on it as does the life of everybody else. And that's a really prescient thought right now too, Scott, because as we think about this pandemic and as we're pandemic astronauts, and we'll explain that shortly, like we need to be looking out for everybody else because it's not just about us. It's not just about what we think or what we feel or what we're connected to. It's how we're connected to the greater good, our homes, our communities, our neighborhoods, our cities, our states, our countries, our world. And that's what human connection is about, watching that chain of custody because if you and I are on the line together, we both got our Pulaski's and we're doing some cleanup, you know, we're relying on each other. Did you get that spot? Like, did you get that hot spot? That's why you're called hot spots. Like, you, you go in there hear and those words. down. <laughs> it's like, oh. You're just down together and you've got, to, you've got to be together. It's not knock it down separately, it's knock it down together. And that's what we're talking about, human connection. We have to knock this down together. And we can, when we circle back to knowing that the core of why we are together is because we are better together when we come together. Doesn't mean we have to agree, Scott. I mean, good gosh, if we're on the line, like you think we need to go that way and I think we need to go that way. Well, then we figure it out. We have the conversation. We don't, we don't, yeah, we, we love and hate each other at the same time at the same, simultaneously, it's respect yep. that is the undertone. It is the, okay, well, I'm gonna trust. It is the transparency with the talk it out. That is what we really need to do a lot more of. The respect and trust is definitely earned. That's not a fast process. Um, I Actually, it's funny. When I got hired for that gig, I was considered an old guy. Because <laughs> I was already in my 30s. Right. Uh, just like the military, they hire you young. And right. the guy says, I'm taking a risk hiring you. He's like, you're, you're, he's like, you have a degree in marketing and psychology. This has nothing to do with this job. And I I'm said, okay. perfect for this. I was like, well, at least my mindset's right. I got psych in there. 
Uh, and he's like, <laughs> like, yeah, he's like, okay, you know, good job putting this on your resume. Like I, you know, I, I had just completed my first marathon back right before they hired mm -hmm. me and stuff. So I, I proved that I have some resilience, but uh, he was worried that I might be too independent of thought because Ooh. there is a, I guess that piece of trust that comes through people. They don't want you thinking too independently. They, they want you to follow, you know, there's, there's, pro, there's policies, there's procedures, there's guidelines in place for safety for a reason. And I did struggle with that. I totally struggled with that. I mean, I, I, I promised him that I would give him two years because uh, he was rebuilding this hotshot crew. And he was an interim superintendent at the time. He, was, he had just mm -hmm. taken over the crew. Mm -hmm. And, and he, he said, he's like, that's a risk of hiring older people is that you've already you know, led people, managed people. I need you to follow and trust in what we're doing. And I struggled with it a lot that first mm -hmm. rookie year. I mean, to mm -hmm. the point where at the end of the first year, like there was a fire at the end of the year that I didn't agree with all the decisions that were made. And I really got pissed off and I was ready to say, you know what, screw this. I ain't coming back. And then, you know, I, I calmed down over the next couple of months that, that, that winter. And I was like, wait a minute, you right. gave him your word. He, needed, right. he asked you for two years. Right. And you agree. You can't go back on your word. <laughs> so I went back my second year. So, uh, yeah. it, but it, I struggled with that. So. And you know, the interesting thing is we all do. Once we have experience in something, as you know, Scott, we tend to color what's ahead with the past. Well, we don't have to though. Like I like to teach groups and leaders and CEOs, look out the front window, look out the windshield with the rear view as a reference. All right, so in a way you were even more valuable with the years in your docket because you like, you've seen some things <laughs> and you can apply other things. Like, I always find it fascinating, Scott, when people are so tunnel vision, like there's only one thing. It's, hello, it's, life is a super highway. It's not a one lane street right. and there are lots of ways you can get to where you're going. So if, if one lane doesn't work, it still informs where you're still in the car. Oh, yeah. You can go for it. You can change lanes. Put your blinker on. Have a change of perspective. Have a change of view. Bring something different to that group because that hindsight is equally value when you know how you need to connect with the people you're supposed to connect with. You know, you're not there to, to run them over. You're there to be part of the group. You're there to lead in your own way. A leader isn't necessarily the only one. They're not the squadron chief. Yeah. Anybody can lead. Like the person, the last Pulaski on the line, they can be the leader because they are responsible in a whole different way. So you brought something different. I would bet you dimes to donuts. That was one reason that your interim superintendent also had that in the back of his mind or her mind and thought, hmm, okay, well, he has seen some things. So yeah. let's tap into that. That's true. I mean, I was within two years age of, of half of my squad bosses. So it was, it was, we actually connected a lot easier that way, but yeah, sure. I, I definitely had to, shut my mouth and learn to, what was, what was it? Asses and elbows, that's right. Uh, all we want to see is asses and elbows, right? You're, 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 you're bent over, you're taking a lick on that line and you move on right. and the guy behind you and the girl behind you and just keep going, right. so you're, you're an assembly line, you're a freight train, yep. cut and hand line and, and that's yep. what they need. It's like, dude, take your, take, a, take your strike at that dirt, asses and elbows, move on. So, right. Right. Uh, <laughs> I was willing to do that. And uh, yeah. I, you're right, I actually, I think that's another chapter. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep the same name, but it was about mental resiliency and mm. the younger, the younger guys that are on the crew and a couple of girls we had come in and out of the crew here and there uh, to fill in some spots. If somebody was injured, we would rotate people in from the engine crew there. And they all said the same thing. It was like, Oh man, like this is so cool. Like it's an adrenaline junkie job. Right. There's, there was still the fear there. And actually it's good to have fear because it keeps you straight. So. You know? Yes. It keeps uh, you alive. But I will say I, I wasn't overly phased by a lot. Like, I think I definitely had more patience when, when shit hit the fan. <laughs> so sure. to say, put it that right. simple. So, right. Cause you'd uh, see another shit hit different fans and oh, say, yeah. okay, it's just another fan. Let's yeah. clean it up and keep yeah. going. It's a new pile. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. That's, that's a great visual. Like a whole bunch of fans, like, Oh, there's yeah. chicken, there's horse, there's cow. <laughs> there we go. Where are we going with this time? And, and I grew up on, a, <laughs> I, I grew up on a farm. So I've experienced all those forms of manure. <laughs> so, right. Absolutely. And if you spread it right, it's fertile and it's useful. If it just sits there, it's, it's shit. Yeah, if it's, it's literally useful, just a pile of shit. Compost and it's regenerative, just like a good forest fire. There you go. Actually, I, I love teaching people that, by the way. Actually, the movie that came out a couple of years ago, Only the Brave, uh, which told mm -hmm. the story of the fallen Granite Mountain hotshots from Arizona, um, they, that movie was set in 2010, 2011 when I served. So it was crazy. Ooh 
watching that movie because we and actually I served alongside of those guys because our bases were an hour from each other. So it was it hit hard when when they fell in the line of duty and mm -hmm. such. I mean, it was second largest loss of life since 9 11 is from a from the firefighting community uh obviously in the wildland space not the city space but it was crazy right. but uh right. just thinking about those types of things and for educating people like oh fire's bad i'm like no fire's good i mean if you don't let fire into an area which we did for years and right. then you have these blow-ups well you right. you tried fighting the natural process now you have 40 years of overgrowth and right. then if a spark gets in there you have these crazy tragedies and these massive blow-ups and all these destruction and fire doesn't need to be destructive. It can be healing. A lot right. of people don't know that uh, the ponderosa pine will not shed its seeds without fire. So right. that is literally right. the gift of life for that tree. Right, right. you've got it. And, and to bring us to connection, like that's the connection of fire with the earth. And it is regenerative, it is restorative and mother nature is built in. She's an amazing engineer. Yes, she <laughs> she, like she's gonna get our butt every single time. If we think we can best mother nature, we're whistling Dixie because we are unconnected with the truth of the fact that this earth is way more powerful than us. So it's being connected with what is, here's a, here's a story I would illustrate it with. Years ago, I took a sheriff's academy, lived in Ames, Iowa, and cool. the, the county there uh, offered a sheriff's academy. And so I, I applied and I took it. It was fascinating, Scott, because <laughs> what do you think I knew about sheriffs? I don't know. I mean, uh, Robin Hood. officers. I mean, right, uh, like, oh yeah, the, the, sheriff, the, the, uh, sheriff of uh, Nottingham. Uh, right, yeah, right, yeah. and and uh, Blondie Prince John and so forth. So it's this fable. Like I, most Americans don't know what the role of a sheriff is, and so I learned and I went in there, and and the sheriff, Sheriff Fitzgerald, had a double masters. I think human psych and business administration. So like he was a good. I I was really wow. I didn't know anything about him before we started highly educated staff overall because usually when somebody believes in education and they're leading the pack they support education with others but what I remembered from that among other things Scott was he said when you are in the line of duty and this is your this is your life this is the line this is whatever it is for you whatever your line of duty is is it right or is it reasonable that was gold right so when you're on the line and you're and you're putting the last things out or you're trying to make sales calls or you are trying to feed your family whatever it is you're in the line of your duty that you have chosen by the way that's choice connect well with your choices and then think is it right or is it reasonable and it doesn't have to be an or either scott like, or is a word i'd like to throw over the fence that's it good can point. be right like, yeah it can be both because we like we like absolutes for some reason, or we think we like absolutes. You, you got the psych in your background too with marketing. You know, is it tied or is it a uh, game? You know, what, well, it doesn't have to be one or the other. Yeah. We can mix and mingle the best things. That's where innovation comes from. That's where ideas flourish because we say, oh, well, it can be blue and it can be green. Oh, yeah, well, how do we do that? And then we figure it out. That's what being really connected to your purpose, yourself, and therefore what you do. Like, it drives me nuts when people say, oh, what do you do? Like, it's such an empty question. I do a lot of things. That's how I respond. It's, right, it's, <laughs> it's, it's the wrong question. Like, it's like, it's like I, 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 I was like, do you have all night? Cause like, I do a lot of stuff. I mean, that's mm -hmm. it. So I agree. I don't like the question right. either. I'm like, how about like, how do you live? You know, or you know, what do you right. enjoy at getting out of life? I don't right. care what you your know, career is, so. Right, and you can start with what I would call, um, tighter questions. So that question can be really overwhelming. Um, and some people don't want to answer it. And I, you've probably been in the same spot, Scott, when we're between things and we're not sure what's next, it's the last question we want to answer. Like, oh, don't ask me what I want to do. In fact, I won't go to that thing because I don't want to have to feel that thing around. It can, like be, stressful. Yeah. It, it can be very stressful. My fine husband who I adore is a professional brewer. He had a sabbatical of over a year and a half. He's like, I don't know what to tell people. Like, uh, and so we, we worked through it. As a coach, I, I can give him some ideas. It's got to feel, he feels like, I feel so disconnected because brewing and that community is his community. And now he's not there. So he's very unmoored. He's like, I don't know. Well, why do why did he take the year too? Like maybe he was getting burned out. And did he take it a sabbatical for that reason? Because I know a lot of friends, depending on their career choices, that they just take time off. Like they're like, it's yep. okay to take a break oh. and take a breath. <laughs> it's more than okay. It's important, right? 
Um, just like when you're on the line of fire, you have to literally get out so you can get some fresh air. You have to, oh, yeah. you know, you're going to send your lunge and, and all that stuff. So he did because he needed to decompress. I mean, I've done it the same thing. I, I was at the top of the heap at a hardware dealership um, group and like, oh man, I want to do this job so bad. It just, it's just not cutting the mustard. And I, I tried it every way till Sunday. And then I thought, all right, I am so disconnected from my own purpose by trying to force this thing. It's not working. It's like fighting a fire fire with a garden hose. Yeah. I, you know, it's just not going to, it's not going to work. So I can fight the fire, but I got to back up, step out, reconnoiter, take a breath, take, take a break. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's more than okay. It's the right thing to do. Sometimes we have to recalibrate. I like that. Uh, it's actually makes me think of something we said all the time when fighting fire. Uh, we we're always like yelling at each other to keep your essay up, meaning your situational awareness. I have a chapter on that too. And uh, because it's like, it applies, <laughs> it applies to so many things in life because granted, yes. I'm not fighting fire anymore, but what you're talking about, like, why do I take back, you know, step back, assess the situation, right? Mm -hmm. Keep my essay up, being aware yes. of what's all going on and then figure out the next steps. But a lot of yes. us are just like, go, 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 go. Now, granted, if it's, if you're in a state of emergency, I get it. Maybe sometimes we do have to get in there and, and just get after it and right. go direct as we called it. And, uh, but not always. Uh, no, usually, and that's where our training pays off too, right, Scott? So yeah. that's why we train. That's why we practice. I used to be very flippant about practice. And then I thought, no, I can't be flippant about practice because if I want to be world-class, I've got to practice because the people who are not world-class, there's no judgment. They just don't practice. Yeah. And, and, and then your situational awareness, it kicks in. That's when people say, oh, it's my instinct. Now, no, it's not your instinct. It's practice made permanent. Right. And so it's so ingrained that you don't have to think twice. So when the, the crap goes down, then it's probably going to be a better situation because you're not uh, flustered. You're right. not like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. Well, if you've practiced, if you've connected with that practice and knowing that it's 90% practice, 10% execution, you're going to be better for everybody. I, I love the practice piece because uh, again, just, I, I love talking to former firefighters because like, now everything's, everything's in my head right now. And I'm like, <laughs> it's like, for example, you know, most, most hotshot crews, you don't earn your belt buckle. It's just, as it has the crew logo and everything. You don't get that until you've been with a crew. All, most of the crews are at least two years or three years, depending on the crew's uh, you know, handbook. So that was like my souvenir. Like I, I got a cool, badass belt buckle. Uh, but, and it you know, has a seal on the roll on the back and everything else. But the best part was like, you come back the second year and you're all high, right? Because you're like, dude, I put in that first year. I survived. I know my, I know my shit. Right? You think you know your shit. Uh, and then... <laughs> And they're like, all right, all right, man. Snooky. And I was like, Snooky? He's like, yo, you think you're done learning? He's like, no, first year you're a rookie. Second year you're a Snooky. And I was I have a chapter on that. I, so I have a chapter. It's called one. Rookie to Snooky. And I think that's a great lesson in life. It's like, no, you're never done learning, man. Like, No, that's your subtitle for your book, Hot Shot, yeah. from Rookie to Snooky. There you go. And that's where, and, I, and I, that actually grounded me because sure. I do take that into what I do now. And it's like, okay, like podcasting. I've not been podcasting over four years, but if I went back and listened to my first few episodes, holy crap. I mean, things have changed. Studio's nicer. I've, I've, I've leveled up. I've learned. I studied. But just the gift of gab. Um, my wife says I talk too much anyway. So I, there we go. Hey, let's, let's run a podcast. Uh, but <laughs> just because you talk too much doesn't mean you're good at it, right? It doesn't mean you're good at having a great conversation oh, with somebody. Yeah. <laughs> just because you blank a lot doesn't mean you're good at it. Yes, right. that's gold right there. We're done with the show, folks. Wrap there you it go. up. Drop, drop the mic. You know. <laughs> See you for beer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a part of what, I mean, obviously, you probably talk a lot about this with your public speaking events too, right? It's like, this is, it seems like it's common sense, but not everybody, it doesn't always resonate with everybody. So common sense is not common practice as one of my coaches, Brendan Burchard says, mm -hmm. and yes, as a professional speaker, it's definitely uh, relevant for sure. Uh, and it's the industry is taking a hit right now. So whether you're listening to this today or you listen to this in the future, we're right in the middle, middle of COVID right. um, 2020, who knows how many more uh, iterations we're going to have. And you're right, Scott, there is the sage on the stage model, which is pretty much dead. I, I wish it would die completely because that's lecture style. Yeah. We, need to, we need to engage. An audience is like a fire. It is alive mm -hmm. and there's just no doubt about it. And to, to disrespect your audience by only pushing, no, 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 no. This is marketing because I've got marketing in my blood too. I totally love marketing. Marketing yeah. is communication. Marketing is connecting. It's finding out 
who are your people? Where are they at? How do they want to be communicated with? What's their, what's their rhythm? What's their style? What's their desire? What do they think they want? What do they, what do they know they need? And that's the engagement of connection. And man, when it hits, whoo, baby, it's magic. Yeah. Like full box, let's go. But it, when, when it's not connected, when you are struggling, when you're forcing jokes, when you, when you haven't honed your craft, I also delineate very much between public speaking and professional speaking. There's a huge difference, Scott. Oh, good point. Yeah. The prof- I, the I do not call myself a professional speaker. I have, sp- I've spoken you on are. stage. I've spoken on one so far. You are. Oh, you are. okay. Yes. Right. How's yes. that work? <laughs> because you are doing it for a professional reason. You are doing it for the gain of the audience in the end with your expertise. So anybody can speak publicly and generally professional means you get paid, but there's some recompense to you doing this, Scott. You are giving the gift of conversations to people and you're coming at it from a professional standpoint. So up your freaking game and call yourself a professional speaker. It's amazing how many people want speakers for free. In fact, I've started to reposition myself. I I call myself an expert more than a speaker because Mm. people will pay for experts, but they won't pay for speakers. Like it just makes no damn sense. But in the speaking world, if- Well, now everybody's all about being an influencer, you know? uh, Sure, you can use that term if you want. I'm an influencing- uh, yeah. expert, professional speaker, yeah. whatever you want to call me, <laughs> whatever you want to call now. And I would, I would say the professional speaker is more like the industry. And if you want to influencer or, um, impact, you know, whatever the local and common parlance is at the moment, you can call it whatever you want. If you really want to make a difference, you're coming at it with a service heart anyway. And so you are going to find your people and you have their best interest at heart. You're really connected with why you are in your own line of duty. Well, I like the expert piece too, because I'm guilty of this as well. I, I, I love ripping on myself on my own show. I, uh, like growing for, for me, I'm, I'm, I can say it as a male, growing a set of balls to do things, you know, as, per se, right? Like the book, the book should have been out by now. I drug my feet. I was worried about what the firefighting community would think about me because I was only doing it for two years, blah, 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 blah. I, I started having to make all the excuses. And I'm in a professional author's group like mastermind group. And they warned me of that. They said, you will get in your own way. Uh, you will second guess yourself. You will question your right to be an authority on a subject. And I, I, I thought about all that stuff. And I think a lot of people hearing this or watching this, I'm probably, I'm hoping I'm connecting because I think you've probably been there too. We've all second guessed ourselves or not trusted uh, that, that ability to call yourself an expert, right? To, like, to put forth that good word. So. Yeah, and, and that's an interesting migration. I, um, I haven't struggled mightily with it, and it doesn't mean I have a huge ego. But my, my process to coming to it has been a little different. So um, I used to call myself a speaker or something, and then I tried on expert for size. And it wasn't because I didn't believe I was capable. That's not the issue. Uh, it's like, gosh, do I have enough information? And, you know, so maybe someone's like, well, gender, that's the same thing. Okay, whatever you, however you want to classify it, whatever. But what I chose to do then is I edged myself into it and I said I had expertise. So words are so powerful. So I graduated into expert. I mean, I, I truly was when I look back and out that, uh, in that rear view mirror, but I wanted to not be arrogant. Um, and it's like calling yourself that's a thought leader. Favorite. Yeah, I don't, I don't call myself a thought leader. In my head, that's my goal because I want to lead people in an area of thought but I don't call myself a thought leader. I, I think that's really odd when people do that, quite frankly. Like strive for it, but it's internal work to become a thought leader. Other people call you a thought leader instead of you calling yourself a thought leader. You can be an expert. Yeah, I have expertise in something. So you could try that on for size and then keep going. And by the way, do you realize you just said you're in a professional author's group? So you're a professional author. Uh, okay. I just, I was going off of their verbiage. <laughs> well, actually, I struggle with that too because I wasn't calling myself a writer. And then my, my editor, who's also an author, she goes, uh, didn't you say you've been published in a local business magazine multiple times? I'm like, yeah. She's like, did you write those words? I said, yeah. Yes. She's like, you're, yes. already a, you're already a professional writer. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, editors are the best. Mine <laughs> called me on the first, I've written two books. I've got a third one coming out here from my head soon. I'm worried about that. I'm worried about yeah. that. Like once you get the one done, I'm like, oh no, is this going to happen again? <laughs> well, it's, it's such a, well, it, it either is or it isn't, right? Like duh, uh, Yogi Bear in the room. Anyway, um, she called me on right away. I don't like the word content because it's uh, so, it's so empty. Like what the, be specific. It's very specific generic, terrific. Very generic. And so she called me on it in the, in the very beginnings of our first book. Um, and she said, Ginger, 
She like stopped me cold. We were having one of our meetings and she stopped me cold. She's like, Ginger, you do not create content. You are a writer. I'm like, got it. Good. I like that. It's more specific. I like that. Yeah, because if, if you and I were on the line of duty, on the fire line, someone said, go knock that down. Oh, okay. Where? How bad is it? Where is it? Where is it going? What's the wind direction? Yep. You know, is this day, night? What What do we got going? Like, I need some specifics. Oh, yeah. We're not just going to hike in and say, great. I mean, no. every every hour in the hour, we were spinning weather, che- right. you know, checking relative humidity, right? Checking the dry bulb right. temps, all this right. stuff. I mean, yes. part of that job, I don't know what the hell a dry bulb versus a wet bulb versus a a cyclometer uh, was, right? <laughs> I'm like, I'm just sitting here spinning. Here comes the rookie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the, and because I got you, you literally go knocking that thing down, fine. But is that thing, you know, a right. thousand feet higher in altitude that changes your weather patterns, it changes everything, like just all right. this stuff. So even though we assess it before you go in, then right. you're still doing real time weather when you're in there and reporting right. back so they know what's going on. But Absolutely. yeah, so you can't yeah, just- you have to stay constantly connected. And so it seems like a lot of work because it is. And if we turn that work to the positive, like I used to not like the word work, Scott, and now I love it because to me, work is effort that bears fruit. I see work as progress. Sure. Yeah. It it should be productive. If it's busy, you're doing it wrong. Busy is like one of my friends, Frazier says, busy is bullshit. Oh yeah. Like people say, oh, well just, just, just stay busy. I'm like, I don't want to just stay busy. That sounds like you're just a limiter too. What is that? Yeah. Yeah. Was that, so, oh, that's busy work? Like, no, you're either working and you're being productive. <laughs> right? Don't put them together. They're not like, sales marketing. It's not busy work. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. But, 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 but people do. And a lot of stuff being thrown around right now. People are like, oh, you got to stay busy. You know, don't, don't let you know, COVID distract you or, or upset you or depress mm-hmm. you. And I'm like, mm-hmm. sorry, people are going to get depressed. People are going to have struggles with their mindset, positivity. Right. They don't know what's happening next. You know, right. the business world has completely changed, right? I mean, luckily, I was already set up for that success. So actually, my business has thrived during this transition because I was already helping people online. But not everybody was ready for that. You got, right. you got you have parents who became teachers, and they can't wait to get hand, hand the kids back to the teachers. And like my own client, she's a single mom with kid and also runs two, two companies. And she's trying to do all this. And then, oh, now she has to get her kid online to take his class uh, when she's also trying to run her own webinar. Like, no one was ready for this. So, right, right. It's, I don't know. I mean, I, I, we've been hitting on a lot of hot points, but I really want to dig into this astronaut factor. And, okay. I, and, I, and that's where it's, it's a crazy times. So, so what, are you, what are you pushing with this astronaut uh, theme? I, I love it. Yeah, besides being, like, I think I my hear off the top of my head. I'm like, I'm just looking in from outer space and taking it all in. It's like, it's like the biggest situational awareness ever. <laughs> right. Quite literally. Like, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, well, as a professional speaker and as a curious person, curiosity is a, a trait in connectors. Uh, I always do two things, Scott. I'm doing the zoom out and I'm doing the zoom in. Okay. What's going on on the ground, quite literally? What What's right here in front of me? Anytime I take a class, anytime I make a new recipe in the, in the kitchen or I open up my fridge, I'm like, what do I have here? And then I do the zoom out. Like, oh, what is the picture? What is the essay? Yeah. What yeah. is the situational awareness? I love that. I'm going to start using that. Thanks. Yeah. I know, right? Um, it's just, it and, just clicks. I love it. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Um, that'll show up and I'll be like, this one for Scott, the hot shot. Um, so what I'm hearing and what I'm a lot of people are coming to me for is how do you stay connected when you are up and down? And so this idea of an astronaut, a pandemic astronaut is that we, we get launched and then we're coming back or maybe we're part, mm, are we going to enter? Uh, I don't know. Should I, should I go back into orbit? Should we, mm, we, oh, we, we have to recalculate reentry. Yeah, you know, do we, do we miss our window? Right. It's the most irregular EKG you could possibly imagine. And so that takes a huge toll on us in every single way. It takes a toll on us physically. It takes a toll on us significantly mentally. Please, 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 if you're listening or watching this and you need help, get help. There's so much help out there. Mental health is nothing to be messed with. Firefighters know this too. Like there's huge decompression that always needs to take place because you've seen things, you've been through the fire quite literally. That's why we use that saying. So helping people recalibrate 
what, here's an example. I'm doing a series for an existing client. It's a, the Craft Beverage Expo, um, Association, and they, I'm doing a perpetual adaptation series. It's because right now, week to week, things are changing. Okay. I mean, it feels like day to day sometimes are changing. This fine client you have of you who already has 15 flaming plates spinning in the air, yeah. she doesn't need another damn thing. So how does she, how do we help her? Right. People like you, people like me, how do we coach? How do we lead? How do we teach? So people can effectively lead their own lives in perpetual adaptation. Look, the world hasn't stopped, clearly. Okay. <laughs> it has changed in a very remarkable and very, very condensed manner. This could have this could have stretched out over 10 years. This could have stretched sure. out over a millennium. But Mother Nature said, all right, you're not paying attention. I'm going to really give you a wake-up call. And so uh, being connected with yourself first, always. Your why, it's the number one thing I teach. you got to know your why, your purpose, your vision. Oh, you I appreciate that. You are, yeah. You're it affects just, everything. Oh, I mean, it, 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 why are you in a relationship? Life? Why are you everything. in this career? Why are you everything. starting this business? Everything. Oh. Your sleep, your eating patterns, like everything. Because... And for the record, my friends, clarity is not a destination. Clarity is a journey. Like that. So perpetual adaptation is what always needs to happen. If you think you're, if you've got a, a vision of your life in the future, great, that's going to change. And I say that in an encouraging way. Just know that it's going to change. Like my good friend Mike says, change is coming. So you might as well open up your arms and give it a hug anyway. Like it's coming. Yeah, so like I never planned on becoming a firefighter. Like people are like, oh, that, you know, that was one of your, no. well, you were, so you must have thought about that when you were a kid. I'm like, actually, no, no I no. did not. No, no, something, something clicked. I was killing myself in my career. I hated it. I was back at school doing an adult student, adult, to finish that degree, finally on nights and weekends, and I was burning out. Right. And then I had, and there's, this will be in the book, but there's a, a girl I had met, and she was moving back to Nevada to be a hot shot. And I was like, What's a hot shot? What's wild? What's wild? What, the hell, what the hell is wild and firefighting? I was born in New Jersey. I was like, what? what? So it, it became an obsession. I mean, it just stayed there in the back of my head for like the next two years. While he's, right. And I said, that's right. it. I'm going for it. You know, but right. I wasn't, in the, right. wasn't planning. Right, right. And you know, I'm so glad you brought that up, Scott, because one thing I encourage people to, in fact, I just about wave the shoulds. I don't shit on people normally, but I'm going to wave the should here. It's like, do not ask, especially kids, students, almost graduates, of anything, what they're going to do next. Oh, Enormous yeah, pressure. Yeah. Nobody wants to answer that. I, I was speaking at a, um, some college classes at UNL, University of Nebraska Lincoln, uh, a couple of years ago. And um, I was letting it rip because my client was totally supportive. Ajay, big shout out to Ajay, hospitality pro, uh, professor. And like, look, you don't have to answer that because you don't know. And even if something comes out of your mouth, it might not be. I never thought I'd be a firefighter either. Hell, I hated to run. And hello, 45 pounds and 40, whatever the, I don't even remember what yeah, it was. It was a, a 40, yeah, it's a 40 pound pack, pack test. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And five miles and 45 minutes or something like that. I, I remember that. You probably remember it was, that. Too, it was, actually, it was, yeah, 45 pound pack in 45 minutes or less. And you can't run. It's a speed right, bike. Right. Yep. Uh, yep. And you have to do, is it, was it two miles or three miles? Three miles. Yeah. I think it was at least three miles. It, yeah. was three, yeah. it was three miles in 45 minutes or less with a 45 pound pack or, or weight vest. And, yeah. and, and you're not, and one foot must be on the ground at all time, meaning you can't run. You, you could speed, right. speed shuffle. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'll remember that. My friend Grant came out to time me and I'm like, my head was down. I'm focused. I'm like, of course right. I can do this. Of course I can do this. I mean, it's like running for a plane. Think that you can do it, but give yourself the time and the grace and understand that you do need to do it. Like, why are you doing this? Because let's take something like firefighting, Scott. If I'm not really in it and I'm your buddy on the line, mm, Dude, you're in danger. And so cool. am I. And then I'm going to put so many more people at risk. So think of your life that way. Think of your life as being on the fire line. I, I love that connection because uh, the, the hotshot creed I, I tattooed on my ribs says duty, respect, and integrity. And that's also in the book, right? So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm channeling that the rest of my life. I, I put it into my business. If I start questioning a client relationship or questioning something I might or may or may not do next in my business, I'm like, right. is there integrity with that? All right. But also, right. sometimes I don't want to do something. I'm like, you know what? They hired you for a reason. It's your duty. Just get it done. And then if you don't like it in the future, then make sure you don't offer that in the future, right? So it's like, you say sure. you're gonna do something, do it. Make sure, sure people trust you. And make sure you're a good person. I mean, it's not rocket science. So no, no, yeah. 
No, I'd like to know what the rocket scientists think. And yeah, know. you know, the, the duty, respect, and integrity, I like that. I just wrote that down too, is um, I got a good friend. Her name is Bree. She's a high level coach. And she, um, once you learn those lessons, then you need to remember them. They're only failures if you don't learn. I don't believe failure should be romanticized anyway, but take a mistake as tuition and, and move that so forward. So many people oh, need to learn that. So right, many. exactly. We're guilty so, of and it. we all do. Like, yeah. don't beat yourself up. There's no guilt, there's no shame. Simply learn from it, keep that lesson fresh. So you know, next time, why does this feel off? I learned a long time ago, Scott, you probably learned this too. I learned as I've, as I've carried forth in my life, like once in a while you feel like, eh, something's stuck or you're, something doesn't fit or you're like, you, you, something's niggling in the back of your mind. You're not sure what it is. Listen to that, pause. Give yourself a timeout to say, I need to essay. I need to situationally assess why am I feeling this way? Well, finally, I learned it probably no more than 10 years ago. Finally, like, oh, when I'm feeling that way, something is off. It's out of integrity. Yeah. And so I need to listen to that because I'm not respecting myself. And by the way, if, if anybody here is listening and they're an entrepreneur, which I'm guessing a lot of people are, um, Gen X, Gen Z, Gen Y, Gen whatever, yep. listen to That's that. That's our target audience. Because <laughs> I know, I know. And I love, I love the age of Gen X, Gen Z, Gen Y because they're being pushed and they're being told, for example, they have to be leaders, but they don't know how. Well, that involves connection. I had the honor of speaking at a fraternity a couple of years ago. And like, we're being told to be leaders, we have no idea how. We wanna know, what is this thing? Like, oh, right, you could go in there like duty, respect, and integrity. If you run those through that litmus test, Scott, you're going to qualify. And by the way, what's coming out the other end is probably about this much. When people say you've got opportunity, yeah, you do, but I would rephrase that and I would say you have choices. Opportunity is a fruitful choice. So don't kid yourself and think that just because there's, there's an opportunity that it means something. Like in marketing, here, you're gonna totally know what I'm talking about. Somebody goes to you and says, oh, would you like to advertise here or there or whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's great exposure. Yeah. I freaking hate that because exposure gives you frostbite or sunburn. Frostbite or sunburn. Like, no, no, I wanna... <laughs> I want a nice I've, I've, I've yeah. hiked four teeners and I've skied in the backcountry. So I, I agree with you. The term right? exposure people right. think is, is positive. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. nah. no, no. And, and then you're trying to, then they're trying to convince somebody. Don't try to convince, persuade, or cajole. Like know what your core is, know what the duty to yourself is, know what your respect is and know what your integrity is. And then you say yes to so many things by saying no. That's right. my friends. It's very hard for people. Uh, we'll stay on the marketing theme. Like, a, a new client that I acquired during COVID. I never would have taken on a client like this, but now I'm actually liking it. Uh, and he's, a, he's in the fitness world, the exercise world. And uh, he, he never looked at his insight data on social media, right? Like, I was like, dude, you have like 10,000 followers on YouTube. And I was like, do you know their demographics? He's like, no. And I was like, so you want to go run Facebook ad campaigns and you don't know your current following. Right. And he's like, well, I know who I want. I'm like, that's good. That's important. Right. That's not who is necessarily following but who's you. actually following you, commenting, interacting, sharing the content. So right. yes, you want this audience, but what if right. you actually have acquired another whole audience you never would have planned for? Right. Right. You got to listen to the herd mentality. You got to listen to who's in front. Maybe the zebras are in back when you're trying to get the zebras, but the giraffes are the ones you're aiming for. Like, yeah. you, know, you got to get through the giraffes to get the zebra. Well, hang on, make sure you're aligned. You're so right. You've got to align with your message. And then that's where you, that's, that can be frustrating, right? Because then people are like, oh, I got to change stuff. Yeah. Well, what a gift of adjustment that they're telling you. Know, you, you know what you're adjusting now. Yeah. And, then, and then when that, when that, when that, when that, uh, that uh, whack job comes up to you, says, oh, you want some exposure. First, I'll laugh. But second of all, I'll be like, well, here's where I'm taking that exposure. That's what I want. This is the age demographic. This is where I want to go. So yes, if you can plug that together, then we could talk. We're not going right. to talk exposure. I'm going to talk about targeted information. I'm targeting right. my target audience. That's what I right. want. Okay. Right. So not just, oh, just, you'll have exposure. Right. Thanks. No, no, that's, that's like, let's do lunch in an air kiss as I put in my book. Like it doesn't mean uh, anything. Yeah. I made that mistake years ago. Yeah. Uh, years ago, I, when I was trying to learn about, I don't even use networking anymore. I believe in connecting, right? So we're here. You and I are talking about today. Move beyond. I was like, guys, when you're first learning, if you can get right to connectivity and understand the value of that, you're going to be a huge success. But me, I didn't know any better. I'm going to the chamber of commerce things and you're handing out cards and you're networking and, oh, let's do lunch. And I was like, this is dumb. 
<laughs> but I didn't know any better. That's where I started. And now people call me a connector because I'm always connecting people through LinkedIn and everything else. But because I actually paid attention to who they are, what they do. And, I'll, you know, if I can see a connection, I want them to find, hey, what is, this person might be able to learn from you. Or right. I do it in the podcasting world too. Like podcast agencies send me people. I call them agencies. I don't know what they call themselves. Like they connect me with people. I'm like, cool, I'll check them out. And I'll have my VA, you know, go through them. And then, but now like every, once people come on my show, I always try and get, like you today, I'll try and find somebody I know has a great show. And I'll think about who can I get, who can I get Ginger uh, connected with? That's connected. Right. right. And I'll send you a list of 12 people or I'll do a bunch of connections because now I know. And you and I are here because yeah. of somebody else, right? Let's, let's, and let's talk about what connectivity is here for a couple minutes because yeah. we do need to delineate. Um, the N-word, networking, mm -hmm. and no judgment, use what you want. Simply know that there is a fundamental difference. A yes. network is a noun. It's something you built. Think of it that way. It's You can envision a net if you want. You can. I don't care how you envision it. I just don't use it anymore because right. it's it's a noun. It's It's static. When you connect, you're actually in action. You're in motion. You're looking for something deep. And it can happen pretty quickly, depending on how you approach it. And that's what I teach. I teach people why and how to connect on purpose with a service mindset. That's the, the book. You literally wrote the book, The Connectivity Canon. There it is. Right there. I saw that on your website. I didn't even screen share it yet. Hold on. Let's pop yeah. this up. Let's do some screen sharing here. I just, we just saw that. So you have the connectivity cannon right here under your shop option. So yes, absolutely. It and Boom. it's uh, yep. Sell them solo. There's a buy one, send one right now because uh, a lot of people need to learn connection. By the and way, also bundles and I'd give my, I love how simple the book is. It's very clean. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And it's got yellow pages. So yeah, people, people, oh, really? Wow. I've never seen that. Hold on, I gotta I stop know, right? like, Who does this stuff? Well, you know, hello. Well, that's um, different. I heard that it's, it's called goldenrod color and I heard that it's supposed to be good for your mental well being. So anyway. well, actually a marketing buddy runs a very successful podcast. Uh, uh, the soul Hour. our actually shout out to Michael O'Neill. He helped me found mm -hmm. the show. He's my nice. first episode and yeah. his main color in his brand is yellow. Okay. So. Yeah. It's one of my brand colors has been for a while. So, yeah. uh, in the, in the canon, I talk about well, what is connection connection is it's real. It's in person. It's human. It's, it's, you've got empathy in there. You don't actually have to have compassion, Scott, because we confuse empathy and compassion a lot these days. I was going to give a talk, I don't know, several months ago, last year, whatever it was. And I thought, am I using the right words? Clearly you can kind of tell I'm a word nerd. And I, I really want to know what I'm putting out to make sure it's, it's accurate. And so I looked up the difference and compassion means that, for example, you and I can have compassion for each other as firefighters because we have been, we've literally been in that same situation. Yep. But if you'd never been a firefighter and I had, you couldn't have compassion. You could have empathy. You could empathize. Yes. You could have feelings around that more of a sympathetic uh, reaction. And sympathy doesn't necessarily mean tragedy. Sympathy True. means an understanding of that emotion. People, people so, could try and relate and, and yeah, try and, yeah, yeah, and, try yeah. and connect and, with you a little bit, but not, it's not the same level of connectivity. Right, right, and, and connection is going deep and and in earnest and with the intent to serve another person. It's not it's not to shove, it's the card shove to reference your whole thing. And you know, chambers serve a phenomenal purpose and they I do. know you're they not denigrating them. It's a great place to start. You can learn what to do, you can learn what not to do. Um, and that's also- oh, I have a lot I of say. friends, local businesses that thrive with the chamber because they're local brick and mortar businesses. Mm -hmm. Whereas me, I'm online. I mean, I get people from all over. So that's where I realized, you know, I don't need to go to these. I, I still support them. But like my friends who have local businesses, they thrive. They do do very well with that. So I just realized it wasn't right for me. So And, but, you know, the, the cool thing about that, and good for you, you've chosen your reason. And you can, it's going to be up to you. You can still go because we know, I don't like the saying, you never know. I turn it around to, you always know. Like if I go to a chamber meeting and you're there and say you own Scott's house of, I don't know, fireplaces, and I'm shopping for a f fireplace, yet I am a CEO trainer and there's no CEOs in the room, you, know, you still know people. And so that's one characteristic, or that's one way of thinking for connectors, like, oh, and it's not a, what's the right word? It's, it's not the sticky, icky, like trying to take advantage of you, like, oh, right. Scott, who do you know? Like, yeah. can you set me up? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. No, no, it's about like, oh, tell me about yourself. You know, what music do you like? What food do you like? What, like get to some nitty gritty of everyday life that we can all talk about. Well, pr and prior then, to the quarantine, I, I would still go once a quarter. I still, if I have, if I have friends that I met through that years ago, like, oh, you're gonna be at the next one. You know, if, I, if I'm not traveling, 
I'll swing by, you know, right. grab a drink or have an appetizer or whatever and right. they right. hang out. So Right, because yeah. you can still serve them, right? They, they they might ask you questions. You can answer some of their questions. That's that's also why connectors have a service heart. They're they're genuinely that, that doesn't mean you're a pushover, but uh, au contraire, mon frere. <laughs> like when you're serving, first of all, you're really freaking clear on who you are and what you give. You are not wishy-washy. That's why clarity is a journey, not a destination. All of us have the struggle and the temptation of like, oh, but that thing's really cool. No, bring it on back. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I could do that. Just because you can doesn't mean you should, just like I said earlier. So the connect- whole shiny focus, squirrel thing, like, you know. Right, right. Focus on, focus on the people in your life who will make you better, who will help you, who you can help in return. And like, ladder up, my friends. Like, oh, yeah. really. And I it highly agree. I highly, I've, I've you recommended that over the years. And you ladder up. Yeah, your, so your you, social circle, does mm-hmm. affect your your mindset, oh, your influence, massive. everything. I'm not saying you got to disown people, but there are definitely people in our lives that could be pulling us back and holding us back and putting us down. I'm gonna and I'm always you. reminded to share that with people. Yeah. I got something to show you. So there is, uh, this is the disembodied voice talking from the beyond. Oh, I like so, it. You're coming through know, fine. Look. I'm Ding, excited to see what you're digging up. Back to earth. So I just, this is my working copy. So it's written on everything. <laughs> Chapter nine in the canon is ah permission slips and let it go okay yes wait there's more i actually include three permission slips do you remember getting those pink permission slips yeah yeah yeah. hall passes or whatever yeah so i created (laughs) oh that's interesting it's fascinating and i i chose to make that chapter 10 scott because not enough people think about letting go detachment will save your life my friends and if you don't know what detachment is look it up and I, I love to do this. It's slightly tongue in cheek and it's absolutely freaking true. Because unless we detach, we are stuck. We are like tendrils in a jellyfish. And I tell the story that there's a, a woman who lives close to me. Um, she literally lives three miles away from me right now. And she's a good person. There is no judgment. That's another classic character. You just let it go. Um, and I struck up a relationship very intentionally with her, Scott, because I heard great things about her and so forth. And I was really curious and so forth. And she was very receptive. She didn't know. She took a leap. Super grateful. She still remains a friend. I figured out, though, about a year and a half in, every time we get together, it's negative, negative, negative. Um, and I realized, like, oh, I, feel like, I feel like I'm trying to shovel water yeah. every time I'm with her. And I, 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 like, I just, I don't know how to help her. Right, and right. she's not looking necessarily for my help. And so I've distanced myself. So give yourself permission to either soft or be direct. I mean, if you can be direct and it's helpful for you because that's a closing the loop or a letting go. Sure. I've done that before too. And, and if people want to know how to do that, like I do, I, I outline it in the chapter nine. because So many of us think we have to hold on to everything. It's like vanity metrics. Those don't tell you just like your friend with the 10,000 YouTube. You don't, if, if there's no conversation, there's really no connection. So don't kid yourself to think as a business owner or anything, like 95% of people in your feed will not come pick you up at 3am at the airport. Right. That's my time. He's like, Oh, that guy's got 10,000 followers on Instagram. I'm like, but are they all interacting? Right. No, No. they just, they just like and follow. Right. You don't have to say great job. Nice post. Way to go. Hands up. Like, And there's, again, there's no judgment. If that's how you want to interact, fine. Simply know that if you want to be a connector, it needs to go way beyond there. You need to put in the effort and the energy. It is about confidence that comes from confidence, which comes from practice. That is the only way for progress, my friends. I love that. Well, and I love the piece, though, on the whole disconnecting because full circle back to the earlier point of the show, you mentioned about the rearview mirror. Same thing, right? Like you're, if you're always looking back and holding on to what, what, what was. Right. That was part of my struggle from decompressing after the couple of years of firefighting. Like I, mm. I thought, oh, I love the out west life. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move to Colorado. So I moved to Colorado. And then I was always saying, well, when, when I was there, I was doing, I was always fire. Even when I moved back here to Pennsylvania, then it was like firefighting, firefighting, firefighting. That's all I talked about. It was like, this is cool when I did this and cool to that. I wasn't, your living, I wasn't living in the moment. Out. Oh, oh I, I heard about it later. Once I was, I, I grew a pair to I admit, admit my, my weaknesses. And I told people about how my, my, my wife, barely, we barely made it to a year of dating and she broke up with me. <laughs> so because I was so self-centered and I wasn't letting anybody else in mm. and I wasn't living now i was saying oh life was better when it was in arizona and colorado i wasn't mm-hmm. oh i'm back in pennsylvania like, what you, as, then i realized you're, you're being a jackass you're not living for today you're not living for tomorrow right. 
And I'm, I, then I remind myself, wait a minute, Scott, like you took your first skydive in Pennsylvania. You learned a mountain bike in Pennsylvania. You learned to ski. Like you learned about firefighting while you're in Pennsylvania. So like, why is Pennsylvania so bad? <laughs> right. We calibrate. Right. Yeah. But as I, I wasn't allowing myself to move forward. I was holding right. myself back. So. Right. You need to reset your connection. And there's, there's, that's why letting go is so important. Like that saved your life. Now, now you're not a jackass anymore. Yeah, it's um, a different maybe, maybe you're intolerable sometimes, <laughs> but you know, that's different. And, and we I all, mean, she, she, she agreed to the marriage. So I must have fixed something. I was the prenup on that one, man. <laughs> oh, it went deep. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, no. But yeah, I mean, well, that, but they, that's, that's the things like even during this back to the, back to the, uh, the astronaut and the pandemic mm -hmm. and it's something that she and I have been learning like we're we're never around each other this much <laughs> so luckily right? she's got a veterinary business so she gets to leave every day and I'm stuck here mm -hmm. behind the computer so I had to change my life I had to start booking time to unplug give myself a break scheduling my mountain biking rides scheduling my right? gym workouts out in the garage because it was so easy to just fall into this into my three right. monitors so right uh, it's a, you have to embrace change and right. remind yourself why you're doing all of this. Right. So. Yep, yep. And once you do, you become easier to live with, starting with yourself, right? Yeah. yeah. This actually was on a podcast we were recording two nights ago. We talked a lot about self-love and mm -hmm. how valuable that is. And by the way, we're coming oh. toward the end of our slot. You guys still got a few minutes? Okay. What's that? You still good on time? We're coming to the end yeah. of our slot. Okay. Yeah. So I always like to double check. I would respect people's schedules. Yes. Um, but, right, I mean, people have underestimated the importance of the self-love, especially when you get into relationships, because I said this for years and didn't realize how valuable it was. I was always saying, uh, I want to be happy first by myself. Right. And then, so I, but I used that as an excuse to stay single, but then I, it, it morphed into, no, that is important. You need to be happy. You can't, yes. I can't use my wife to make me happy. That's no. not fair to her. It's so. not right. That's a burden on her. And if you don't have your crap figured out, frankly, you know, you need to go figure it out. <laughs> exactly. And that's yeah. what I did for the three months we were broken up. <laughs> and then, and then she, oh, uh, what then was she, that? How was that like for you? A lot of self work. I took all of my personal and professional development obsession and channeled it into trying to figure out romance and realizing that my head was pretty far up my ass. So, uh, and she and was, I, she was the impetus. She was the spark. I told her that. I was like, yeah. I was like, listen, I realized I didn't give us a shot. I was fighting the process. Um, you don't have to, start anew that was part of the right. goal was i realized during that it's like don't try and get her to go back to you you need to start a whole new chapter right and right right boom right there for gold yes yeah, yeah absolutely. i learned i learned that in one of the one of the many self-help things i read and researched and i, I took my psych brain went crazy it was like <laughs> so they talk about how uh the female brain is wired differently than men you ladies are amazing I'm, I, like like true multitasking like you whereas us like we, we sometimes hold on to things a little bit too long and um, they said, you're what, basically, now she's my wife, but at the time, they're like, your significant other, or ex, um, has already flipped the light switch off. So don't, don't think that you're going to get her to go turn that new light switch back on. You need to get her into a different room and flip on a new light switch. So, or a new, new, new another whole city, or another whole restaurant. So, right. yeah, I, I, did, I had to do everything different. So. And you, and you were inspired to do that because of her. Yeah, Absolutely. Because uh, I finally realized, like, wait a minute, I'm approaching 40, and my little excuses aren't working. And, you know, again, are you happy? Are you, you know, and that's what I realized, like, wait a minute, I am happy. So why not give her a shot? You know, so and, but in reality, it was actually give, mm -hmm. uh, convince her to give me a shot. <laughs> right. So that's what I want to ask. Like, do you, do you think something else would have connected you to that, that change? had you no she needed to, she needed to dump my ass she did okay. it, was, it was it was it was it upset me like to my core and i hadn't been upset like that in a long time and i, I usually okay just break up move on and i couldn't let it go and i, I that's i just dove head first and I actually i can thank since firefighting the years of self-development and professional development that became my obsession trying to build a business trying to figure all that stuff out so that actually helped because i knew i was capable of studying you know, and figuring this stuff out. I just right. had to flip my brain mm -hmm. around and realize that, That's hey, Scott, and you'll appreciate this. You've jumped out of perfectly good airplanes. You've raced mountain bikes. You've raced skis. You, 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 you fought freaking wildfires. And here's, here was the wake-up call for me. I was like, you never risked your heart. 
my whole life. I never actually, I have never, I was never in a relationship longer than a year. Right. I was completely shielding, protecting, armoring it. And, uh, so Why? learn, learn it. Uh, fear of vulnerability. Where did that come from? I don't know. I, I mean, I feel, I think a lot of it was like me thinking that I'm protecting myself or thinking that I wasn't good enough or, you know, it's funny. Cause like people are like, why would you think like that? Like you've done a lot of crazy cool shit. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't mean just because a, a guy or a girl does a lot of crazy shit. Like you being a firefighter does not mean we still think like everybody else. We still have our weaknesses. We still have our concerns for growth, right. And, and, and progress. And you know, Oh, what if I screw that up? And it's like, well, you already screwed it up. So you can, it can't hurt to try at, try try to go back and hit it again and say, hey, give, give me a second chance. I'm willing to try harder. Uh, and she was crazy enough to say yes. <laughs> How long have you been married? Uh, just over a year. Oh, wow. All <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, no, no, we've, we've only known each other seven years now. So I, I met her when I moved back here after, after firefighting in Arizona. I moved to Colorado and then lived in Colorado for a year and then moved back here to Pennsylvania. And then a mutual friend introduced us to each other virtually over Facebook. So, all right. And then the rest is history. So yeah, we got, we got, we did a heli skiing wedding in Canada last year. So. Oh, sweet. Where right. like Bam for something like that. Exactly. Bam. Oh. You nailed it. Wow. Oh, you, got a, you got a good thought process there. Yeah. <laughs> right. That was impressive. I was like, Oh, she got that one. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we took a two week adventure up there. So it was good for you. Was awesome. Congratulations. So, yeah, and that's when I realized, like, well, actually, it also took a lot of friends because I'm like, I don't know, like, should I just move on? They're like, you are a jackass, aren't you? <laughs> like, 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 you, you actually had a girl, you, you, you had a girl dating you longer than six months, one. Two, she does a lot of the same shit that you do. So it's like, what is wrong with you? And she's a doctor and she, she heals animals. Like, what else do you need? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. If yeah, if this is never gonna be it, you're you're toast. And like, then I went back to my wife, more. and I was like, well, I do like taking risks. And at, at that time, the biggest risk was going back and trying to get her to agree to even meet me. Right. Putting your heart on the platter. And and put the heart on the platter, right? You're and be willing to try this again. The vulnerability was the biggest piece of that pie. It was like, mm -hmm. all right, dude, you got to get yep. vulnerable. You got to mm -hmm. let her in. You got to mm -hmm. admit when you're being an idiot or you're you're scared or you're not really scared. Like I, I'm not. Who broke, who broke your heart years around ago? Oh God. That's. I just never grew properly in a relationship. I think I just always did. They always surface level. Underneath there, though, Scott. What's There's that? Something underneath? There's something underneath that though. Yeah. I was a late bloomer too. I didn't actually date at all in high school. Yeah. Uh, it was a girl who I broke up with. It was, it was, we were also coworkers and neighbors. It was awful. Just don't do that. Like, just don't do that, people. You weren't cousins, too, were you? No, no. <laughs> but seriously, right? Really, you have no escape. Like, what are you doing? Like, she works in the same building as you. She lives in the same building as you. Like, no, what are you doing? There's no escape. Yeah. So that broke up. That breakup was awful. Yeah, because when <laughs> yeah, because you're still in the same building. You're still yeah. right. Yeah. And then she ended up dating one of my mountain biking buddies. <laughs> so I had to, I had to, I had to observe that. So, but that was good. You you do need to get hurt, and that's what that's part of that little piece here is that people are afraid to make mistakes people are afraid to get hurt and that's where the growth comes from yes and, uh, that's where i've grown exponentially from that uh yes. is that you said it earlier in the show like if you're not willing to take risks and make mistakes you're not growing you're not progressing no nope. nope. so, that's so. where muscle builds we know this for a fact and when we work out and it's we're sore afterwards that's because we're rebuilding that's true neuro neuroplasticity same thing we can literally change our brains if we put the effort into it it will be a huge challenge of course it is you're freaking changing your brain yeah. you can do it the brain is ready you just gotta know how that's really being connected to the purpose of whatever it is you want to accomplish. Yeah. So, you, uh, yeah. you, you, uh, you dabble in a little NLP at all? Um, I have a brother from another who I love who's uh, in that field. And, and one of these days I'm, I'm going to dabble more. Have you done some dabbling there? I've dabbled, but not like fully into a program, but I've had a lot of NLP people, people on the show and I, I like it. It's if, 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 if learned in the right environment, and apply in the right way. I think a lot of people can, can benefit from that type. Of oh, thing. everybody can. Yeah. I'll give a shout out to Scott Jackson. Um, that's that's your brother from the other mother. 
he's the brother from another. He's in my mastermind too. That's how we met. And like, oh my gosh, we just hit it off. And there was an immediate connection. Yeah, and you can tell. Is, yeah, he people is who have NLP okay. background, like oh, think? they think differently. Very oh, progressive. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's definitely uh, an excellent area to grow in. So yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, idea. absolutely. Well, Listen, I mean, I don't want to take up the rest of your night. You got things to do, too. I mean, we've been rapping for a while. Uh, we, no, actually, we, could, we could keep going. We I know. Uh, but we are coming up on the end of the hour. and We try and keep okay. these to around an hour. And I'm going to screen share again one more time for the ladies okay. and gentlemen. Again, her website is her name. It's really yes. that easy. I tell people all the time, please buy your name. Like, yes. I don't have a separate site for scottmulvaney.com. Scottmulvaney.com routes right to livethefield.com. But, you know, when the book comes out, who knows? I might end up launching an author and professional uh, speaker uh, sites. I don't know. So yes, absolutely. Thank you. Who knows what the world will bring? So no, I do like I do like speaking and communicating. Yes, so. yes. Good. Yeah. Well, I will help when you're ready to jump into that or jump out of that plane. You let me know. I'd be happy to help. Well, I, again, I love your site because, like, that one photo I just I just skipped past from like where you're just like all happy, smiley. Uh, that, that's the kind of places I like to go and and see a speaker. The ones who jump into the audience, like you're, you're standing here interacting oh, yeah. with people. Yeah. Like, that's don't what tell you me want. I have to stay by the podium. I'm going to suffocate. Oh my god! Just yeah. get rid of the podium. Like, what, what's what's the deal with podiums <laughs> anymore? <anyway? laughs> get rid of it. It's okay, man. Like if you blah, blah, if, blah, if you blah, know blah, your blah, subject, blah blah blah. Yeah. No, no, get out there. In fact, when I gave my TED talk, I had a couple of questions, and one core question was like, "Can I get out in the audience?" Like I could have. Mel Robbins did it. She just jumped off the stage. I should have. That's Mel, though. Back. Yeah. But yeah, well, five, you know, the five I, second I'm rule. Way, but, yeah. Right. Another great book. Five second rule. Love yep. it. It's in the library. Yep. Uh, yep. yep. It's I gotta get Mel on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Do it. Yeah. Do if I, there's a lot of people I want to get on the show, and I just been so busy, I just. Oh, I'll get around to it. Oh, busy. Did you just pull out the B word? I did the busy oh. word. I did it. Sorry. I've been working so hard that uh, I keep forgetting back, to do back, So you said that was a bad excuse. I will backpedal yes. that because that's that was that was a bad Are use of that word. Are there good excuses? Huh? There are no, no they're not good excuses at all. It's just called no. it's called just reach back out. <laughs> right. See, there you go. I just gave myself some homework for tonight. Reach okay. back out to Mel. So, yes. By the way, yes. do you still take notes physically? I do that all. Oh heck yeah. I got paper files. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Uh, my, uh, a friend of mine, he's uh, moving to Arizona this weekend, back, back to Arizona. He was the guy's, he was the guy I used to crash with on my days off from fire and he misses Arizona. He's moving back. So, uh, we were talking about handwriting cause he does like all this techie quality assurance app analysis stuff. And he's like, man, I love physically writing things down. And I said, well, did you realize that psychologically that yeah. actually is a peak level for memorization? Like yes. Your brain makes that connection. He's like, Oh, yep. It's a funny, it's like, I ne no one ever told me that. I said, yeah. yeah for sure. You want to memorize you know, something? Right, write it down. And, right. To that end, I, I encourage people to write in their books. Again, this is my copy of the Canon. Oh, yeah. I left a lot of, uh, here's a tip for you for your book. Leave a ton of extra space Ooh. so people can write at the end of the chapters. And I like as that. you climb the professional speaking ladder, you can say, okay, turn to page 43 where the connectivity framework is. On the other side of the page, let's do an exercise. Boom, boom, and boom. So it gives people a lot more freedom and a lot more room to go ahead and fire those right synapses because you're so right. Writing things down is never the same. I don't allow laptops. I don't allow people to use their phones in my live events um, because that is, you're not capturing it the same way. You're not connecting with what you're taking in and then what you're trying to keep. Otherwise, it's like, that. Ooh, like, I've been oh. to a number of events and they, I show up with my own notepad i don't need it but they a lot of events they try and give you a pen and paper pad right. i'm like that's good right. we'll do that and, oh yeah and people still try and do the lot i spoke at a, a podcast conference last year and half the people in there doing the typey typey i'm like i literally yelled at them i'm like stop it <laughs> and they're like what right. i was like yeah i'm catching your attention because one that's right. annoying two you're missing what i'm visually trying to represent here as well three right. you're not going to memorize that so I can't tell you how many times I've typed notes and then don't remember what the hell I typed. So right. yeah. it can feel really disrespectful to the presenter as well. Too. Because while some people are like, no, I, I think better this way. I'm like, actually, uh, okay. I'm, I'm not going to treat you like you're in kindergarten at the same time. Really. I, I would encourage you to brush up on what the real, uh, it, real thing is going on there. So well, the, it's a lost art. I, I feel so well, it's resurrected. Yeah. It needs, it needs people like us to keep it I, going. Yeah. I give people, I give, I include a pencil, in with my oh, book. Oh, nice. I like that idea too. Nice. I've had very big in my branding. And it's all about good merch. I like that. 
So. That's right. It's recycled too. So yes, marketing will never die. I love marketing. We can talk. We can nerd out about marketing next time. Really good. I like that. Well, hey, that great. We did have a great show today, and yes. I, when I started this show again, growth change, I was always asking people, "What's your final words of the show?" I always have my guest co-host help us close out, and then I realized over the past few years, it's actually morphed into a legacy message. So I always remind my my people who come on, like, "Hey, this is not time to sell or market." But it's like. Yeah, right. you, you get this with how, because how you speak. It's like, okay, dude, why are you doing all of this? Like, what is right. the message you're trying to leave behind in the world? And that really gets my guest co-host to kind of pause and think. And I know you'll probably be fine with it, but what would you like to leave behind for the audience? You know that feeling, Scott, when there's a door and you're going to walk through it. Your intention is to walk through that door. And there are people on the other side of that door. You're telling yourself that you should, you want to, you can, you have to be on the other side of that door with those people. When you grab that handle or you push that bar and you enter that room, when you can do that with confidence and belief in yourself, when you know why you have chosen to be there, whether it is physical or virtual, you are a connector. You have chosen very intentionally with what I call IGST, intention, goal, strategy, tactics. You have chosen to engage in a way that feeds your why, that helps you serve yourself and serve others better. That is why connecting is so important to me. I could tell you stories, but I know what it's like to feel disconnected. I know what it's feel like to be unconnected, and I know what it feels like to be connected. That's my legacy, to help people learn why and then how. Because once we know that, Man, everything's possible. I love that. Well said. Thank you. Listen, I can tell you, I'll give you a proper goodbye off the air. Ladies and gentlemen, Ginger Johnson. I can't drop the mic because it's on my arm. So. Where's that top hat? I'm going to send you top hat. I know, hat. I'm going to get top hat thing. Uh, da, da, and, that, and a cane to like march out like the frog on the Bugs Bunnies. That would be interesting. That would be good. I would have to do that just for a good laugh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, again, gingerjohnson.com. Check her out. Check out the book as well. We shared it. I'll make sure that's linked in the show notes. And again, I learned a lot today. That's why I love podcasting. It's not just about the audience. And I do take a lot away from this as well. So uh, thank you for joining and thank you for listening in. Make sure you follow her, like her, tweet her, DM her, whatever, yeah, whatever yeah, strikes your fancy. Yeah, let's connect. <laughs> that's right. Connecting. Right so again, on. ladies and gentlemen. We're here to fuel your health, your business, and your lifestyle. Ginger helped us do that today, so thanks for tuning in. Remember, you too could live the fuel. We'll talk to you guys again soon.